Hey there everyone, welcome back to another Captain's Log. As always, I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault. This is Captain's Log 050523, first one of May 2023. Let's cue up the music and we'll get talking. So we've had two major AAA releases come out um, since the last Captain's Log. One of them was Jedi Survivor, the Star Wars game, the uh, follow-up to Fallen Order. Very highly anticipated big game. And the other was Redfall, a uh, day one Game Pass release for Xbox. That was uh, from Arcane Studios, um, which I guess is part of Bethesda. Both of these are very highly anticipated games. Beef, you know, built up quite a bit. People were really looking forward to them, and both of them released to less than stellar reviews overall. Let's talk about both of them and in gaming in general on AAA games. There's been a lot of fails this year as far as um, AAA game releases. Not, you know, I mean, I say a lot, but there's been there's been a few. Look back at um, what was it January when Forspoken came out for PlayStation. And that game was just panned by the fans. I mean, a lot of people liked it, you know, but I have a feeling a lot of people liked it that didn't really like it. They were just probably paid to say it was good. It looked pretty bad. The uh, dialogue was very cringe. And yeah, it just felt like, ugh, you know, and there's been some other ones, but most, you know, lately, it seems like this is happening more and more often. We all remember cyberpunk a few years ago how that came out half cooked um and then you know we get a lot of delays like skull and bones they've been talking about that for years it hasn't come out in forever and it's been delayed till i think 2024 i don't think they've put a a date yet i think they said first quarter 2024 i could be wrong um i think assassin's creed's been delayed as well you know should redfall have been delayed my god based on the way it's getting ripped to shreds on uh, the internet, I think they, should, they would have been better off just delaying that a couple months. But again, would it have helped? You know, the game just doesn't feel like that great of a game overall from what I've seen. Now, I don't have an Xbox. I haven't played the game, but I've, I've watched quite a bit of footage and heard quite a few opinions on it from people I, you know, know and trust, watch some gameplay, and it just, you know, it looks okay. It doesn't look great. It doesn't look like a triple-A game. It's not something that would cause me to run out and buy an Xbox and go, yeah, I want to play some Redfall. You know, triple-A game, when the uh, when, you know when it has cutscenes and they're like watercolor slideshows, it's, that's kind of cheesy. I mean, you're paying for a triple-A game. You know, you, they had these great, um, really cool-looking um, trailers for it. You know, with everybody walking around all badass, killing vampires. But most of the gameplay I've seen has been like, shooting humans from a distance and then the occasional vampire jumping in and then you know you're shooting him it doesn't really seem that engaging or that interesting overall so maybe delaying it wouldn't have helped i don't know people are complaining about the 30 fps instead of 60. yeah that tends to be an issue especially in uh a first person or shooter type games you know that that tends to be a problem maybe the co-op's going to be fun i don't know again i don't have the xbox I won't be able to judge it firsthand. And then it looks like Jedi, um, of the, uh, I'm sorry, Jedi Survivor, the new Star Wars game, also released to some janky play and, and frame rate drops and stuff like that. It seems to have quite a few problems. And it seems like more and more of these games are having issues when they're getting ported over to PC, even more so than they have on their consoles that they're natively created for. And it's kind of curious because. You know, it used to be games would go to PC and then they would get ported to your consoles, right? Back in the day, that's the way it would work. Sometimes they would get developed simultaneously, but a lot of them were PC games that got ported over, dumbed down to some degree in some cases, and brought over to console and made to work on a controller. It didn't work for every game, but, you know, it worked for quite a few. And I think as the uh, years have progressed and consoles have grown and the market's gotten bigger... Um, you know, a lot of these games now are being developed for their specific console, 
and then being ported over to PC, and a lot of that's causing some issues. Look at Returnal. When Returnal went to PC, it had a hard time, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, people had a hard time running that on PC at, at some good settings and all that. There's been a lot of that. The Last of Us Part 1. Oh my God, that looked horrible. You know, and it's on both sides of the coin. You know, every, you know, different developers, it's, you know, giving you different problems. Now, sometimes, you know, the, you get the fanboys out there, well, they're doing that on purpose so it doesn't sell and they don't have to port over. No, dude, it's just, you know, it is what it is. I, it's got to be hard to develop for PC because PC has such a wide range of options as far as, you know, what's out there and what a PC can be built with and what their specs can be. You know, you can have a guy trying to play a game on a crappy little $200 laptop and then the guy sitting next to him playing on a, you know, $6,000 gaming computer that he built with the latest and greatest parts and the best of the best. And, you know, he's got his three screens and all. So, you know, there's a big range of abilities there. I think building for consoles is probably the easiest thing to do for a studio. And especially if they're an exclusive like, you know, Santa Monica building for... PlayStation or um, uh, like Bethesda building for Xbox, you know, you got one thing to worry about now. Eventually, you port them over to PC or whatever, or, you know, sometimes simultaneously. That's fine, but I don't know. It's just kind of crazy, kind of crazy. But it seems like there's been a lot of fail lately, as far as that goes. And I don't know what's you know what's going on in the industry. Why they're releasing these games like this? What do you think as a as a consumer and as a player, would you rather finally get that game you've been waiting on and it not be up to snuff, but you say, oh, well, we're going to fix it in the upcoming weeks and months. And so, you know, the game generally gets better as you play. Or would you rather they say, no, we're going to delay it again, even if it's a game that's been delayed many, many times. Let's look at Dead Island 2, right? That's the one we're showing during this video. Dead Island 2 languished in development hell since, what, 2000? It's been like 10 years, you know, 8 years, something like that. Um, insane long time. It's gone through at least 3 developers. And it's, it's taken forever and Deep Silver finally delivered this game. And what did they deliver? Did they deliver a janky piece of garbage that didn't work right and, and was underwhelming and horrible no they delivered a good solid fun game generally speaking people like dead island too it might not be everyone's cup of tea it feels a little dated in some ways but it also feels great it's like putting on a very comfortable pair of shoes and going for a walk because of the way the game plays and feels and all that yeah some people were a little upset that they were loading screens and it wasn't open world but you know what this game doesn't need to be open world not every game needs to be open world i'm sorry open world's fun and all that yeah it's great to do the exploring it's great to go up high and look around and be able to go to that place you see far off in the distance on the map but it's also nice sometimes to have a little bit of restriction and a little can you know the world is a little condensed so you don't go wandering off not every game needs to be 30 hours, 100 hours, 1,000 hours, whatever they want to make these games. No, they don't all have to be that way. A lot of them can be these smaller, tighter, more concise games. Look at the success of Dead Space Remake earlier this year. That's, you know, again, they did it open world style, yes. But it's such a small, contained world that it doesn't matter. You know, there was no loading screens. It was just a constant, you know, movement through the game. It was great. Uh, look at Resident Evil 4 just came out what a month or so ago again Not an open world game very small very condensed game now granted both of these are remakes of two highly Acclaimed games from back in the day, but still they were both done. Well, they both sold well people enjoyed them They were released in working condition. Yeah, there was some issues with textures I believe in the beginning with Dead Space and um, I think Resident Evil 4 made some people angry when they didn't have Mercenaries mode on when it first released and they added some minor microtransactions which I talked about in a previous video and quite honestly they're not that big of a deal to a single player game guys. <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, so, yeah, so 
but there seems to be a lot of big, big AAA games that are failing, and that's a little frustrating. A lot of people say, don't pre-order. You know, that the guys that pre-order are the ones causing this trouble because you're spending your money on something that you don't know what it's going to be yet, and there is some truth in that, and there is some wisdom in that, you know. So if you don't pre-order, then... You wait for the reviews to come out, and then the reviews come out, and the reviews are awful, and the game doesn't sell. Well, that'll teach them, you know, but it could also bankrupt these businesses, and, and I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It, you know, and, and I'm not shilling for any business. Trust me. These guys don't care about you or me. They, I mean, they, they want to put out a good product. Yes, the developers, the guys that are creating it, the artists behind it, I'm sure they want you to get out there and go, oh my God, that was the best experience ever. That was so cool. Look at the way that looked. Did you hear that? The music was fantastic. Those actors are great. But, you know, the big wigs up top, they just are looking at the bottom line. That's why we have so many live service games that come out and fail every year. But, you know, and, and, and when you do videos and, and stuff like that, you got a YouTube channel, you kind of want to stay on top of things and you want to do the pre-orders and and that way you get it day one and you can immediately start making content or if you're fortunate enough that you've been doing this for a while and have a good reputation you're going to get advanced orders that will allow you to review the game ahead of time you know give you a couple days to play it get through it beat it and then do a review so it's ready when the uh, embargo lifts on reviews so you know it's kind of like it's that thing you know everybody's waiting for that next game it comes out everybody talks about it couple weeks go by and nobody's talking about it anymore they've moved on to the next game you know so yeah you could stop pre-ordering would that help yeah it might help you know it might help a little bit but who knows you know what these guys you know it makes me wonder sometimes with the pre-ordering and some of the bonus things that they offer like early access um, a couple extra skins a new weapon stuff like that you know it's i'm a sucker for those kind of things especially if it's not that much more and you know showcasing it off on a on a channel like this it's fun to have those little extra weapons and stuff to show off and say oh this is what you got with this order this pre-order pack or this special edition you know a game like dead island 2 for instance i ordered the gold edition because it came with a season pass and yeah if they're going to add more story content down the line i'm going to want it i saw enough of the game ahead of time to know and i played the you know dead island and dead island riptide I knew I wanted this game and I wanted whatever DLC would come with it. It looked good enough. Now, I won't lie, I held my breath when it was released. I'm like, all right, I hope this game's as good as it thought it was going to be. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of pissed, you know? And yeah, it did. It delivered. I think it's great. I think it's a lot of fun. I've not had as much fun killing zombies in a long time. So, tell me your thoughts down below. Do you pre order games? And if you do, are you. Uh, are you a guy that likes to get the, the bonus, the bells and the whistles, the season pass and all that? Would you do that with a new game, a new IP? Like, let's say Redfall, for instance, if you, you know, if Redfall was available for pre-order, which it was, but it was a Game Pass exclusive, but would you risk something on a new IP or would you wait for that IP to come out? Would you be more inclined to pre-order something that was a tried and true IP like a Fallout or, you know, a Doom game or another God of War, Ratchet and Clank, whatever, you know, would that be more your style? Because, you know, you've already know this company, you know the developer, you know the game and the general style of it. Yeah, tell me what you think down in the comments below on that. And, um, yeah, that's it. Just a little short one this week, guys. Got a lot going on Monday. We've got a new live stream style coming up with the uh, No Man's Sky live stream. That's from 5 p.m. till 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be doing a permadeath run with the hardest settings of everything for the character. So it's going to be kind of brutal. Some of the guys um, are getting set up. They're going to join me on that from our Discord channel and that, that have traveled around with me in previous No Man's Sky videos, so I'm looking forward to having them there. I think we're going to have a new face or two. We might need to actually have two groups of guys going around, but we're going to try to work together and get to the center of the uh, galaxy together, which would be kind of fun. It's a new way to play, trying something different. I'll see you guys there, hopefully. If you haven't done so, please leave a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notifications. I'll see you guys next time.
Until then, peace.